In this video, we're going to join strings together in SQL Server. And if you're going to say to me, Philip, that sounds ridiculously simple. Just you wait, there are some very interesting functions that might save you a lot of time. I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So let's have a look at our very basic way to join strings together. So we've got, for instance, hi and there. And you can see we're joining together with a plus sign. So here you can see it works. Now you may be familiar, for instance, in Microsoft Excel of using an ampersand, but please note that does not work in SQL Server. You need to use a plus. So we can have two strings joined together. We can have more than two strings joined together. You can have as many as you'd like. Okay, so that's the very simple thing. So I think everybody probably knows that. So now let's go into the functions. And the first function is concat. So this takes exactly what we've got, except instead of using the plus, we're using commas. And if you're saying, oh my goodness, that is so simple, there's no difference between the two. Well, actually there is. But let's just concentrate on what we've got here. And you can see, yes, there is no difference between the two. So where do the differences start? Well, we may not have strings. For example, suppose you're getting back Instead of the string literals, we have actual strings in variables or in fields, columns within rows in tables. So let's emulate this by declaring three variables. We've got a first name, middle name, and a last name. So John H. Smith. So I could say, give me the first name and then join it to the middle name and then join it to the last name. And you've probably done this several times already when you're getting information in from tables. Because these are variables, these have to be preceded or prefixed with an at sign. But apart from that, it's exactly the same thing as if we were getting it from a table. So at the moment, the result of what we've got back is exactly the same. Now, what happens if I don't give this a value? So middle name is no longer h, it is now what? Hmm. Is it an empty string? Well, let's have a look. It is in fact null. So it's not even an empty string. What difference does this make? Well, if you use the plus, then a string plus null is null. So what does null mean? Null is the absence of data. It doesn't know as opposed to say an empty string where you're saying, I do know what the data is. It happens to be a string of zero characters. So if we are attaching, say John to something that we don't know, the answer is we don't know what that is. So you will not be too surprised if you see that first name plus middle name plus last name is, I don't know. Null is the answer. Concat, however, changes the null into an empty string of zero characters. So if I execute this, you can now see that we have John Smith. So the fact that there is a null right in here, it doesn't matter to concat. So the only way around this, if you're using these plus signs, is using something like is null. So if it is null, then give me an empty string. And now these two give me the same things. So that is what's happening inside each of these parameters within concat. It's saying, if it's null, give me an empty string. However, it's doing more. Let's say that instead of a middle name, we have an integer. So let's give that integer number four. So we are now joining John to a number four. What do you think will happen? John plus four does it equal John four? The answer is no, because what the computer is trying to do is convert the string to the number as opposed to convert the number to a string. And that causes an error. So you can see the entirety just gives me an error. Concat, however, it is expecting text. And if it gets something other than text, then it will do its best to convert it to text. So in this case, the number four will be converted to a string four. So if I rem this out, if I comment that out, then you can see that the concat gives me John for Smith. 
So it doesn't matter if there are nulls, it doesn't matter if there are integers, it will do its best to convert it to what it needs to be converted into, which in this case is a character or varchar or similar. So you can see we haven't got any spaces in here. Well, we could add spaces. So we could say, okay, give me a space after the first one, give me a space after the second one, don't give me a space after the last one, we don't need it. So now we have John for Smith. But suppose we got 20 parameters, then I'd have to add in 19 spaces. That's no good. And what if we've got nulls? So if I say that the middle name, let's take this back to a varchar, is null, then we're going to have John two spaces Smith. So then we'd have to work out how to get rid of the two spaces and now it gets complicated. However, we don't have to allow it to get complicated. We can add the separator, we can say with separator with this function. So concat underscore with separator, W S. So I need to say the separator right at the beginning. So the separator, which separates out all of these, is a space. So now you can see we have got John space Smith. Notice what's happened here. It's not John space space Smith. When we have a null, it ignores the null in regards to the separator. So let me repeat this middle name lots of times. We're still going to have John and then one space Smith. So if I add in an initial, then we now have two spaces, John space H space Smith. If I change this to a number, we're still fine. Now let's go to my final function of this video. And to introduce it, we need to have a look at a proper table. So let's choose sys.objects. So we have got name and object ID. I'm just going to reduce this. I'm going to say where the name is like row. So with those percentage signs, it's looking for row somewhere in the name, whether it's at the beginning, the middle or the end. So that reduces us down to just three names, sys row sets, sys row set refs, and sys cs row groups. Now let's just have name and object ID, just to reduce it down even further. So we've just got the two columns. Now what if I wanted one string that had first name, second name, third name, maybe separated by commas? Well, I can do that using string underscore ag. So ag is aggregation. So I'm doing some sort of operation with strings. So what I need, first of all, is my expression. So that's going to be name. So the name is going to come from sys objects. And then I need the separator. What's going to be separating them? Well, I'm going to start off with a space because that's fairly simple. So we can see that the result is sys raw sets space and all the rest space. So imagine if we had this with a huge number. So you can see how much more useful this is. We don't need to know how many answers they're going to be. We don't need to know how many rows. We just can combine them all together with a separator. Notice the separator is at the end of string underscore ag, whereas it's at the beginning of concat underscore ws. So let's just expand this a bit. So we've got the name and we've got space. Let's put in a comma before the space. Notice that it's not putting the comma at the end as well. And it's the same with concat ws. If you remember there, we're not having any spaces at the end. Now I can see this more easily if I change this to a comma we will not be having a comma right at the end here. So you don't have to worry about there being one too many and having to remove it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in the object ID. So I'll put in a space and then a bracket, and then I'll put in object ID, and then I'll put in a close bracket. So if I run that, you can see we get an error because object ID happens to be an int. So what I can use is concat. 
So instead of all of these pluses, I can just have a comma and know that everything is going to be modified as necessary. So an int is going to change to a string, a null is going to change to an empty string. So let's just have a look at this because it's getting a bit confusing. So I'll just separate it into lines. So we are going to combine, concatenate the name, that's a field or a column from this table, sys.objects, and then an open bracket, and then the object ID, which again is a field or column from sys.objects, and then a close bracket. And then we're going to aggregate it all together using a comma and a space as a separator. And so now you can see the end result. We now have the name and in brackets, the object ID, and then it's all separated with comma space. So hopefully you can see how much useful concat is, how it can actually make your functions simpler because you don't have to worry about there being nulls. You don't have to worry about it being the wrong field type or data type. If you want a separator, then you can use concat underscore WS. And if you want to do it over several rows, then you can use string underscore ag. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.